learn by trial and error. That's what I do. Hi there, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Teresa. And in today's video, I wanted to talk about how to do an at-home photo shoot. So whether you're using this for Instagram or Twitter or even your OnlyFans, this video can help you out with that. The five things I'm covering in this video are choosing a location, choosing an outfit and accessorizing, equipment you might need for this, how to pose, and how I like to edit my photos. First, it's very important to choose a location maybe based on the background, what colors you have in the background, or it's just like a blank wall. Location is the very first thing you need to choose. It's going to affect every other decision that you make in this process because it's going to affect maybe what color clothes you choose, even like the vibe you choose or the lighting you're choosing. Personally for me, I like to use windows on the west side of my house when I'm taking photos using natural lighting, which is usually what I prefer. Right now I'm using a window on the south side of my house. It kind of casts a shadow on this side as you can see. As we all know, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, so that means that I can usually get all of my content made in like the early to mid afternoon. Usually I try to make content between maybe like noon and 4 p.m. 4 or 5 p.m. somewhere in that range is usually the optimal time for me especially like 4 to 5 p.m. I get really nice golden hour lighting but obviously it's blinding so depending on what kind of style I'm going for I might choose the location and the lighting differently than another time that I decide to make content. If you've been following me for a while you know I have green couches I have one bed that usually has pink sheets on it and I have another bed that usually has blue sheets on it. But I also have a ton of different comforter sheet sets just so I can mix them up as I need to just to make the background a little bit different every time or maybe coordinate depending on what outfit I've chosen to wear. Some of these decisions are objective. So even if you choose a location and then you decide you wanna wear a different outfit, maybe you can tweak the location if they don't go together quite right. Usually what I'll do for my OnlyFans, I'll take pictures and two outfits so normally the first one is like an outfit that I have been thinking about wearing and then I'll choose the location based on that and then the second one I just kind of wing it you know maybe I'll choose a different location and I'll choose a different outfit but it's not as planned out usually as my first outfit. I also find it important to keep your background space clean. I know that sometimes I see girls post pictures and the background is really messy and I think you know if there's one or two things out of place people won't care you don't have to be like a neat freak but just like there's not any garbage or anything in the background just make sure your background is clean number two you want to pick an outfit so normally depending on what your background is like i said my home is pretty colorful so my outfit can change depending on where I'm taking photos. Like if I'm taking pictures on my green couch, I'm probably not gonna wear like a yellow outfit. Like go pack go, but that's not really what I'm going for when I'm taking photos for the internet. You can spend a lot of money on clothes for your OnlyFans if you are just putting on different lingerie sets every single time that you wanna take new photos. So one thing I like to do in order to change it up is accessorize with different jewelry and like different props things like that will just spice up any outfit so that you can wear it multiple times and you're not spending more and more money on buying outfits a lot of times the outfits that I choose are just sets that I've had before that I just haven't worn in a while and also I've changed my hair a lot recently in the past year so that has also helped me make all of my outfits look fresh and new, which is another way that you can diversify your content. But I think using props and jewelry is probably a more cost effective way to do that, especially since you could probably write off that jewelry as a work expense and then keep it for the future too. Some different props that I like to use are like, I'll use blankets if I'm taking pictures on the floor because I think that would be weird for me to just be like laying on a hardwood floor unless that were like the aesthetic I were going for. And that just hasn't been a vision of mine so far. I like to use fake glasses because I know a lot of people like that. Or like sometimes if there's a holiday, I'll try to dress up for that. You know, I bought 
a set for Christmas and I've dressed up in like a referee costume with a football for the Super Bowl, things like that. Just be aware of your audience and like what's going on around you and that can really inspire you with some ideas for your at-home photo shoot. The thing I wanted to talk about is doing your hair and your makeup for your photo shoot. So now that you already have your location and your outfit picked out, you know what colors you're gonna wanna use on your face for your makeup. Remember to stay consistent kind of with your style so that you're bringing in like a niche market of people that are going to like your style. It doesn't really matter what that style is per se, it's just that if you have a different style every single day of the week, then people don't really know what kind of content you're putting out and they don't know if they're gonna like the content that you make. So for me, you can tell I usually do a pretty soft glam. Sometimes I'll glam it up a little bit more, but you're not gonna see me usually with bright, eye makeup and bold lips or whatever. And then I think another good way to vary in your content creation is just doing your hair differently. It's been really hard for me since I cut my hair because I don't really know how to curl short hair. Comment down below if you have any suggestions for me. I've had people tell me different ideas and it took me until I was probably like 20 to learn how to curl my long hair by myself. And then as soon as I was finally confident with that, I just chopped it all off. And I think it was a lot harder because when I first cut my hair into a bob, it was much shorter. It was probably a couple inches shorter. So it was just like waves. It wasn't even real curls. But I think now that it's growing a little bit, I'm gonna be trying that out a little bit more. Give this video a thumbs up if you wanna see me try and curl my hair. But yeah, makeup and hair can definitely give the same outfit a totally different vibe. If you have one outfit and you change the lights, the location, the makeup, the hair, the accessories, it's gonna be like a totally new outfit. And that's one thing that I love is trying out new accessories, new looks in order to freshen up your old style. It's a great way to keep your closet sustainable and reuse old outfits. For equipment, the number one thing you'll need is your phone. You can use an LSDR like this. I use a Canon T7. I got it from Kohl's. It's not super fancy, but it can definitely sharpen up your images. However, our phones are so advanced these days. If you practice, you can get just just as good of a picture from your phone as you can using an LSDR. You'll also need a tripod. This is the one that I use for my LSDR. I have a ring light that I use for my phone. This actually, it comes with a stand for your phone. I just don't like to switch them out, I'm lazy. I just got that tripod. It's been on my list of things that I've been wanting to buy for a while now, but I just couldn't bring myself to spend the money on it. And I'm glad that I finally did because I feel like my photos are so much better now that I I've been using my LSDR rather than just my phone camera. The brand is like UB's it. I just got it off of Amazon. So I'll link it down below. I also got these umbrella lights from Amazon. They're pretty cheap. I'm still working on lighting. I would say lighting for me is the most difficult part of the process, especially when you're working by yourself because it can be really hard to get your camera in the right place, then get you in the right place, make sure your lighting's right and get them all together when it's just you doing it and then get your pose right make sure your face looks good there's just so much that has to go into these types of photo shoots one thing I love about the Canon is that it comes with an app so I can see what I'm shooting on my phone rather than just using a little clicker which those I think are awesome because you can hide them better and those kind of just fit in the palm of your hand. I have a couple of those too, so maybe add that to the list of things that you might wanna use if you're doing an at-home photo shoot, either some kind of clicker or an app on your phone that helps you take pictures. It's so much easier than just trying to use a timer and running back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Another thing I like to do if I'm taking content on my phone is I will just record a video and take screenshots out of the video and on my LSDR, I do continuous capture. But honestly, as long as you have a window with some good natural light, just like this one right now does, and you have your camera and some good editing skills, I think that you can do an at-home photo shoot without all this extra equipment. Even like right now, I'm not using a tripod, I'm just using my windowsill to shoot this scene. And I like to do that a lot. Like you'll see on my TikTok, I'll be 
about right here too, because I've found that just using my windowsill is a good way for me to get the lighting that I want. It's not always the perfect height. It is right now, but like on TikTok when my phone is, so I do suggest that you use a tripod, but it's not completely necessary. And you don't need a big one like this. My ring light is just a light that's like this big. And I think it's like a four foot tall stand and it still works for me. I wish it were a little bit taller, but if I were shorter, that wouldn't even be an issue for me. I wanted to talk about posing in this video, but it can vary a lot based off of your body type. I suggest looking up videos on like TikTok or YouTube. There's tons of videos you can look at for how to pose, especially for your body type. If you find somebody who looks the same as you, I think that that can be so helpful because if I tell you how I pose and you look completely different than me and the poses don't look good on you, like I just don't want that to be my responsibility. <laughs> If you want a couple quick tips from me though, I would say know your angles and the only way you're gonna learn your angles is by experimenting. So learn by trial and error, that's what I do. I'm aware of like what I like on my body and what I don't like on my body. So I've definitely tried over time to test out different angles that I like. And if you look at my pictures, you can usually see there is a little bit of repetition for poses that I like to do. And I think that that's true of anyone. Everyone has certain poses that they're more comfortable with versus poses that they don't really like. What I try to do is instead of sucking in, I like to engage my core so that you can see my defined obliques. I don't have abs, but I've got those side lines. And then sometimes if you like angle your body more to the side, it can make you look thinner, depending on what you're really trying to accentuate. It's also important to make sure that your shoulders are relaxed so you don't look like you're like sucking in. A couple things I try to stay conscious of are my hair. I feel like every time I get a good picture of my face, something is wrong with my hair. And then also the angle at which you hold your head in front photos. I know sometimes if I don't have the camera at the correct angle, I get really bad like double chins or on the flip side, sometimes I'll overcorrect and it'll just be like a full picture of my neck. It's either like double chin or nothing at all. So I invite you to experiment as much as you can with different poses, different lighting, different outfits, different locations. I'll tell you, I've had some at-home photo shoots that I absolutely adored, that I loved so much, they turned out so well. And then I've also had some that I totally hated and that I couldn't even use pictures from because the lighting was so bad. Or sometimes like if I'm about to get my period and I feel bloated or I have too many blemishes on my face, you know, there are so many things that can affect that. But I think it's really important to just work toward your goals every single day. And so for me, since I have a lot of goals as a content creator. It just so happens that every single day, that's something that I'm working on. When it comes to editing, I really only use Facetune. I don't really use any other apps unless I'm doing some very specific edits. I've got a couple different editing apps on my phone, but I've found that most of them do the exact same thing that I can do on Facetune. So I just don't exactly see the point in subscribing to a bunch of different photo editing apps. I just downloaded downloaded Visco, I will say that. I haven't gotten to play around with it much, but I do like some of the edits that I've seen other people do on Visco. So I just downloaded that. Maybe leave a comment down below, let me know. Once I've gotten more experience with that, would you like to see a video on how I use Visco as well? Make sure to comment that down below. When it comes to Facetune, I'll always start with the brightness. I'll either increase or decrease the brightness depending on the lighting in the actual picture. I usually add a little bit of color, just like 10 to 20 points. And then I'll do contrast about 10 to 20. And I do minus structure because it I think it gives me like a nice little heavenly glow. Like I'm not actually using the smooth tool, but it just smooths me out in a very natural way. Those are the ones I would say that I always use. Like I said before, it's really important to experiment with all of your options. Some other features that I like to really use are the temperature, the light button, 
shadows and highlights, and also sharpen and grain. It really just depends on the photo that you're editing and like what's wrong with it. Like I said in my video about automating your OnlyFans, I'll always like write down these measurements as I'm editing in case I have to edit more than one photo and I want them all to look the same, but they normally turn out about the same anyway, just because I know what I like and what my preferences are when it comes to editing photos. Even sometimes when I do the exact same edit, they don't look the same. So I'll have to go back and tweak it a little bit until I think they look right together. Even the slightest changes in lighting and editing can completely transform a photo. That's why when it comes to editing, I don't like to go overboard. If you found value in this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and turn on the notification bell if you're interested in seeing more videos like this. I post every Tuesday and Friday, so make sure that you're subscribed if you wanna know the next time that I'm posting a new video. Most of my videos on Fridays will be about OnlyFans and content creation. And on Tuesdays, I'll either do like a vlog or I'll do an episode of the Bimbo Book Club, which you can check out. I'll link the playlist above to the Bimbo Book Club and I will see you in the next one.